Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to Go Giants episode 4. I am your host, Mr. Mini Guy. The 49ers game is over, and the Giants really exceeded my expectations. In a negative way, that is, because I believe the score was 9-36, to so I had the Giants lose by, I believe, one touchdown. They go out there, and they lose by either 3 or 4. Um, this team is awful. Um, I had them losing. I didn't have them losing by this much. Um, really, really disappointing, especially in Daniel Jones. Uh, I believe he threw, like, what, another interception that was 100% on him. I love Daniel Jones, but it is getting more and more difficult to defend him week in and week out. But I'm ranting a little bit, so I'll go ahead and take you through some of the highlights. Not really highlights, mostly lowlights, to be 100% honest with you. Some stats and where we stand in our division. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. During the first quarter, the 49ers drive the ball down the field, leading to a successful 52-yard field goal, making the score 3-0 49ers. Late in the first quarter, the 49ers score a touchdown, however, they get a penalty on that play, causing them to settle for a 32-yard field goal, which they successfully make, making the score 6-0 49ers. In the second quarter, a successful quarterback run by Daniel Jones lets the Giants go down the field, leading to a successful 52-yard field goal, making the score 6-3 49ers. With about 9 minutes left in the second quarter, the 49ers kick a field goal, however, it is missed wide right. With 7.5 minutes left in the second quarter, the Giants successfully kick a 42-yard field goal, tying the game 6-6. The game starts going downhill from the Giants from here on out. Having the 49ers on the 3rd and 22, the Giants successfully stop them on 4th down, However, an illegal contact by Darnay Holmes causes them to get an automatic first down, which they later on drive down the rest of the field and score a touchdown. With about a minute left in the second quarter, Daniel Jones throws an interception to 49ers linebacker Fred Warner. Jones' interception gives the 49ers good field position, leading them to successfully kick a 26-yard field goal going into halftime, making the score 16-6 49ers. When the Giants get the ball in the third quarter, they start driving the ball down the field, leading them to kick a 47-yard field goal, making the score 16-9 49ers. This is where the game really starts to fall apart for the Giants. The 49ers drive the ball down the field, including a run from wide receiver Brandon Ayuk, who gets a couple of blockers, leading him to score a touchdown, making the score 22-9 49ers. The Giants successfully stop the PAT, however a face mask penalty on the Giants lets the 49ers re-kick it, which they successfully make, making the score 23-9 49ers. A little bit into the fourth quarter, Nick Mullins throws a screen pass to Jeff Wilson, leading him to score a touchdown, making the score 9-29 49ers. And lastly, the 49ers drive the ball down the field once again, making a couple of open field catches, breaking a couple of tackles throughout the drive, leading to a run by Jeff Wilson, their running back, causing them to score, making the score 36-9 49ers to end the game. I've dubbed this game the MetLife Massacre. Never before have I seen a Giants team this pathetic. The 49ers have, what, second string, third string players in, and the Giants go out there and get absolutely obliterated, especially in the second half where they just completely fall apart and just give up. I would say there's always next week, I haven't even checked to see who we're playing next week, but honestly, I highly doubt we'll win next week's game. I had to check to see who they are though, but in my personal opinion, it's highly unlikely we'll win next week as well. And with that, the recap is over. Now it's time to take a look at some statistics, unfortunately. Looking at Daniel Jones' stats, he completes 17 passes out of 32 attempts with a percentage of 53.1, throwing for 179 yards, no touchdowns, one interception with a rate of 56.6, and takes two sacks in the game. Comparing it to last week and the week before, Jones consecutively does worse and worse. Daniel Jones is still my guy, but it's starting to get harder and harder to defend him week in and week out. Hopefully he can prove me wrong next week against the Rams, but that's also going to be an incredibly difficult game as well. Looking at Darius Slayton's stats, he doesn't do as great as he did the last two weeks, having 53 yards out of three receptions with an average of 17.7. 
And looking at Golden Tate's stats, he has 36 yards out of 5 receptions with an average of 7.2. And that's it for the statistics segment. Now it's time to look at the standings. In the NFC East, the Redskins are in first place with a 1-2 record as they'll stay at home and face against the Ravens. Despite them being at home, however, that will be a difficult game as the Ravens are a good football team. In second place are the Dallas Cowboys, who I believe that they lost to the Seahawks in overtime, so they'll drop down to a 1-2 record as well as they'll stay at home and face against the Browns, which will be a pretty easy game for them to win. The Browns are not a good football team. They haven't been good for literally since, I believe, the 80s or 90s, one or the other. In third place are the Philadelphia Eagles with an 0-2-1 record, yes, 0-2-1, as they tie against the Cincinnati Bengals today. They will go on the road to play against San Francisco, the team who just beat the brakes off of the Giants. And speaking of the Giants, it goes from bad to worse for us as we go 0-3, and to make things even worse, we'll have to travel to Los Angeles to play against the Rams, which will, I'll be honest, this could also be a blowout for the Giants as well. And I'll end the video off with this. This team is just terrible in general. We're going to go on the road to play against the Rams, and that's going to be a blowout most likely. Um, in my Rams preview, I'll have you show what I believe the score will be. Um, I don't think we're going to do good at all, to be honest with you. Joe Judge, we can't judge Judge, no pun intended, too much since, you know, this is literally his third game as the head coach. Um, Daniel Jones, it's not 100% Daniel Jones' fault. But some of the things that Jones has been doing is really a head scratcher. I still love Daniel Jones, but I'm really questioning if he's really the quarterback we truly want. I'm not saying it's tank for Trevor. I'm not saying that Jones sucks, but he has shown no progression whatsoever within the first three weeks. Like, yeah, I know that they don't have a preseason, but still, it's like the worst mistakes a quarterback could possibly make that he makes. But anyways, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, Go Giants!